Hello students, welcome. This is Miss Mercado speaking. I hope all of you are doing well, that you're staying safe. Um, I miss you guys a lot. Um, it's been a difficult transition, especially for my traditional um, students. Um, you know, having to transition in the middle of the semester from face-to-face -face instruction to online instruction. Um, nobody signed up for this. It's just something that happened um, and we cannot control. So we might as well make the best out of it. Um, I hope you all are enjoying. If you are able to stay home, um, the time at home with your family. I know a lot of you have to go out there and work. There's a lot of people that are on the streets working. If they work for restaurants, um, for banks, um, there's just a lot of places that are still open. Um, so if you are one of those people that are actually out there working, um, well, thank you for your service. Um, and second of all, try to stay safe. Make sure you all wash your hands. You know, wear a mask if possible. Um, and we hope that all of this passes by quickly, okay? So, I'm going to move on. This week, we are starting a brand new chapter. We're starting off with chapter 8 with deals with receivables, okay? Just like any other chapter that we cover, please make sure that you read the chapter before attempting your assignments, okay? I've had students say, Miss, I'm lost. I start asking basic questions of the chapter and the student has no idea what I'm talking about. Why? Because they haven't read. Okay? Reading is necessary. Please make sure that you read and after you read the chapter, then you begin working on your assignments. Um, from a student's perspective, I recommend the students complete the quiz first. That's basically terminology, concepts, you know, multiple choice questions kind of a thing. We get that out of the way first. Um, and while you complete that, it helps you build the fundamentals of the chapter. Uh, you get to understand things a little bit better. After you've completed your quiz, then I recommend you start your homework. Remember, the homework is not timed. You can save your work and continue it at a later point in time. Now, I went through your homework assignment for chapter eight. Um, this is um, week number, let me see, week number 13 already, guys. So this week, uh, week 13 covers um, April 13th through April 19th, okay? So we're already week 13. After we cover this week, we're gonna have three more weeks of instruction, and then we are done with instruction, and we're just gonna have our final exam, okay? So it's after this class, or after this uh, week, three more chapters that need to be covered. So we're almost there, we're almost at the finish line. Please don't give up. I also wanna ask all of my students, whether you're from an online class or from my um, hybrid class from Star County, whoever you are, if you're in my Principles of Financial Accounting class, and if you're having any type of difficulties working out any of the problems, have any questions with anything, just let me know. Um, on my Blackboard, um, I've let you know how to communicate with me. You can send me a Blackboard message, an email. You can call me or you can text me, okay? Um, whatever works for you, reach out to me, okay? And let me know, miss, I'm having problems and I'll help you out, okay? Um, just let me know because I'm not a mind reader, okay? So if you don't communicate with me and you don't tell me you're having issues, then I really can't guess that you're having difficulties, okay? Now, I went through your homework for this week. All of the problems that I've assigned have a show me how video, okay? So within Cengage, once you open up your homework assignments, you're gonna select or it's gonna open up the first problem. Each of the problems in the very top has a video associated with it. They're short five minute videos specific to that problem. Now I've listened to those videos and they are informative, but um, um, what can I say? They're a little bit fast paced, okay, from my perspective. This is just me as a student. I'm kind of a, like a slow learner kind of a thing, you know. I need things really explained more in depth and uh, the, they explain how to solve it, but really, really fast, okay. So now I've selected some of the problems that you have for homework. I'm not gonna cover every single one because of time limitations and I don't wanna bore you. Um, but um, I am gonna go through some of them. That way you get a general idea of how to solve them in case you have difficulties understanding the videos on Cengage, okay? I recommend that you listen to the video once before trying to attempt the problem just to pay attention to what they're doing and then go back and revisit the video once you're trying to solve out the problem. So, this is chapter eight, which deals with receivables, okay? So, I'm gonna start off with the first exercise, okay? 
Now, this particular exercise deals with entries for uncollectible accounts using a direct write-off method. And in this particular uh, chapter, they go over two methods that we're going to mainly be covering. So we have uh, two methods that we're going to be using. One's going to be the direct write-off method, which is what we're going to have in this particular uh, problem. And then the second one that we're going to be covering, we're going to be covering an exercise 8.4. It's the allowance method. So we have two methods that we're going to be covering, and I'm going to cover both of them with you. Okay. So the first one we have is a direct write-off method. So it says, journalize the following transactions in the accounts of Canyon River Medical Company, a medical equipment company that uses a direct write-off method um, of accounting for uncollectibles receivable. Okay. Now, there's two methods that we're going to go over. The first one is the direct write-off method. That is covered on section 8.3 of your uh, ebook. Okay. Now, under the direct write-off method, bad debt expense is not recorded until the customer's account is determined to be worthless. At that time, the customer's account receivable is written off. So what does all this mean? Okay, when um, you have a business and you have someone that buys stuff from you on account, they promise to pay you at a later point in time, okay? What happens is you set up your receivable on your books. These people uh, said that they're going to pay you within 30 days. Okay, so you set up your receivable, 30 days pass by, these people have not paid you, you pick up the phone, you call them, they're not answering, you know what, then they let you know, hey, I don't have any money, business has been very bad, you know what, time passes by and you identify this person is not going to pay you. Okay? You can't keep a receivable in your book for forever, okay, after a certain period of time, if they didn't pay you, then they're not going to pay you, so you need to get that rid of or write it off from your books. And that is what we're doing here. Under the direct write-off method, we write it off when we feel that, you know what, this item is not gonna be collected, okay? So you review your books, you look you look at all of your receivables, you see how long they've been sitting in your books for, and then you say, you know what, any account that's been sitting in my books for over 150 days, I'm, I don't think I'm gonna collect, I'm just gonna write it off. And that is what they're doing here. So we're gonna write, of these accounts using the direct write-off method. And remember, this is done or this is recorded when we determine that the account is not going to be collected. Okay, that is the direct write-off method. Go. So we're going to start off with January the 19th. It says here that you sold merchandise on account to Dr. Kyle Norby, $6,400. The cost of goods sold was $3,000. So here in January the 19th, we have the actual sale going on. Okay. So I've got my journal set up here. So I'm gonna have January the 19th, okay? So what happened here? I made a sell, okay? Who did I sell to? I sold to Dr. Kyle Norby on account. So whenever we sell something on account, I'm gonna use my accounts receivable, okay? And uh, this is for Dr. Kyle Norby, okay? I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger over here. Here we go. So I have, I set up my account receivable for D Dr. Kyle Norby. And what happened? Well, I am having to record a sell because I sold to her, okay? How much did I sell? $6,400, okay? Now that's the first transaction that needs to be recorded when we have a sell. Now we have a second transaction that needs to be recorded and that is to update our inventory, okay? We sold merchandise. Well, what happened to my inventory when I sold merchandise? My inventory decreased. I need to update my inventory, and I also have to record my cost of goods sold, okay? So I'm gonna debit my cost of goods sold for the amount uh, that the, the goods actually cost me. I paid $3,000 for them. I sold them for 6,400, pretty amazing, right? So cost of goods sold gets debited inventory decreases that goes down because you no longer have it in your warehouse okay so your cost of goods sold represents the amount uh, that you spend on uh, this particular merchandise okay you have to record it as sold because it's gone okay so cost of goods sold three thousand you have to update your inventory um, you had that in your warehouse now you've taken it out and sold it you shipped it to dr norby your inventory is decreasing, so that gets credit, okay? 
So the top one records the sale to the customer. The bottom one updates your cost of goods sold and your inventory. Okay. So that happened on the 19th. That happened in January. Now, six months have been passed by. Now we're in June, June the 2nd. You received a $500 payment from Dr. Norby and you wrote off the remainder owed of the sale of January 19 as uncollectible, okay? So during these six months, Dr. Norby has not given you a single payment. Now finally on June the 2nd, she sends in a check for $500, okay? So they owed you $6,400 and they're only paying you 500 bucks six months after the fact, okay? So they're asking you to record that payment and write off the remaining balance. You're gonna deem this as uncollectible. You know what, I don't think Dr. Norby's gonna uh, pay me anymore, so I'm just gonna write it off. This is happening on June the 2nd. And what are we gonna learn from this? We're gonna learn that we are not long, no longer gonna sell to Dr. Norby on account because she doesn't pay, okay? You need to learn from your mistakes. So here, it says that we received cash, okay? So they paid us cash, of $500, okay? Now, I'm gonna skip a line because I need to uh, do an entry at the end, okay? Now, they're telling you that you're gonna write off the remainder owed on the sale of January 19th, okay? So on my books, I have a debit of my accounts receivable to Dr. Norby. I need to clear that debit. Well, how do I clear that debit? I need to credit it, okay? So what happened? Well, Dr. Norby, made us a payment, right, of $500. Okay. I need to clear, and they're telling you here, here that you're gonna write off the remainder owed, owed on the sale of January 19th. I need to clear this receivable, okay? So my accounts receivable, and I'm gonna abbreviate here, my accounts receivable, uh, let me, uh, oh, sorry, click my calculator in error, okay? My accounts receivable for Dr. Kyle Norby, okay, is gonna be, I debit it, now I need to clear it, I'm gonna credit it the $6,400, okay? Now, the customer owed me $6,400, they paid me $500 in cash. So let me get my calculator out. So they're telling you that you're gonna write off the difference. So the customer owed me $6,400, they paid me $500, so that means that I'm gonna write off $5,900, okay? $5,900 is what I'm gonna take as a loss, okay? Because we're using the direct write-off method. Whenever you use the direct write-off method, you're gonna use an account called bad debt expense. Oh, sorry. Bad debt expense, okay? Now, this is an expense account. All expense accounts have a normal debit balance, okay? So, I collected $500. I wrote off to my bad debt expense $5,900. I clear my entire receivable of $6,400 that I had on January the 19th, okay? So now I have a debit on January 19th. I have a credit to my receivable on June the 2nd. This customer no longer owes me any more money in the books. Why? Because I collected $500 and I wrote off the difference. That happened on June the 2nd. So June passed by, here comes July, August, September, and October. On October the 23rd, they're asking you to reinstate the account of Dr. Norby that had been written off on June the 2nd. So we're gonna look at what happened here June the 2nd. And because we received $5,900 cash in full payment. So a couple of months later, the customer comes back and pays us $5,900. But what had we done on June the 2nd? We had written it off. In my books, Dr. Norby owes me zero, okay? Because I wrote off $5,900 in June. So now this customer is paying me in October. So what do I have to do? Well, the first thing I have to do is I have to reverse the entry that I did on June the 2nd when I wrote off my balance. So on October the 23rd, I'm gonna reverse only the part that I wrote off my bad debt expense, okay? The $500 were collected, that's fine. But we're only focused on the amount that you wrote off. And I wrote off $5,900. I debited my bad debt expense $5,900. 
and I credited my accounts receivable, okay? So now to put it back into my books, I have to do the opposite. I'm gonna debit my accounts receivable. Oh my God. I'm gonna debit my accounts receivable for Dr. Kyle Norby. Okay. And I'm gonna credit my bad debt expense, okay? So my bad debt expense was debited, now I'm gonna credit it $5,900. My receivable was written off. Now I'm gonna put it back into my books. And I'm, I wrote, um, here I cleared $6,400 because it included my $500 payment. In this transaction, I'm only interested in reinstating the amount that had been written off. The amount that was written off was $5,900, okay? So what does this tell me right here? What this does is this tells us that Dr. Norby owes me $5,900. And I went ahead and I credited back my bad debt expense. That way in my books, I no longer have that as a loss. It clears. I have a debit here and a credit here. So I no longer have that loss in my books. Okay. Now what happened? It says here that you received $5,900 in cash. Okay. So step number one, you reinstate your write-off, which you did here. You put it back into your books. The second part is you collect you collected the payment so now you have to record the payment well what happened you collected cash of $5,900 okay now what's gonna happen I have in my books an accounts receivable for $5,900 this tells me that court Norby owes me $5,900 well Norby just paid me $5,900 so I have to clear this receivable so right now I have a debit for $5,900 sitting in my receivable I need to clear that by crediting my accounts receivable for Dr. Kyle Norby, $5,900, okay? So, let's recap. We made a sell on account to Norby, okay? So we recorded the receivable of $6,400, they're gonna pay me later, and I recorded my sell of $5,400, okay? That same day, I needed to update my inventory and re or record my cost of goods sold. This is how much I purchased the merchandise for, for $3,000. On June the 2nd, you received a partial payment of $500 and you wrote off the remaining balance for Dr. Norby, okay? I wrote off it to bad debt expense because we're using the direct write-off method, okay? So bad debt expense gets debited at $5,900 and I cleared the entire accounts receivable balance for Norby of $6,400. On October the 23rd, the customer comes back and pays me everything that they owed me, okay? Since I had already written off the balance on June the 2nd, I have to reinstate it, put it back into my books. So I'm gonna reverse this entry that I did on June the 2nd for $5,900. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna debit my accounts receivable for Norby, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna credit my bad debt expense for $5,900, the amount that you wrote off, okay? Then the customer paid you cash. You have to record the cash that you received of $5,900. And now you're going to clear the receivable because the customer actually paid you the amount of $5,900. Okay. So that is the first problem. Okay. You are going to have this on your test. You're, you do need to know how to use the direct write-off method. And you also need to learn how to use the allowance method. Okay. That is why I'm going through both of these individually. Um, and then I'll show you um, the last problem that basically puts those two together side by side so you can see the differences between it. Okay. So now I'm going to move on to exercise 8.4, which is the allowance method. Okay. So it says, generalize the following transactions in the account of Sippy Interiors Company. This is a restaurant supply company that uses the allowance method of accounting for uncollectible receivables. Now. Under the allowance method for uncollectible accounts, um, basically the allowance method uh, does an estimate of the amount of uncollectible accounts receivable at the end of each accounting period. Okay? Based on this estimate, bad debt expense is recorded by an adjusting entry. So what happens at the end of an accounting period is we have to estimate how much during this year or this month, it just depends how frequently uh, the company does this. Okay? Uh, but uh, they say, okay, based on an estimate of what they've done in the past, okay, they record an adjusting entry, okay, 
they record the bad debt expense. Bad debt expense gets debited. And then they put money into this bucket, this account called allowance for doubtful accounts. Okay, so the bad debt expense accounts gets debited. The allowance for doubtful accounts cre account gets credited. So what we basically done is we put money into a bucket. Okay, now every time that I identify that, you know what, the customer ABC is not going to pay me, I take money out of the bucket to write off that account. Okay. And then you just keep on taking money out of the bucket until the bucket dries up or becomes empty, okay? So, some important terminology or some important concepts that we need to understand. When you put money into the allowance for doubtful accounts bucket here, you're gonna credit the account, okay? When you take money out of the, the, the bucket, this means you decide that customer ABC is not gonna pay you. You take money out of the bucket to write off the account you need to debit allowance for doubtful accounts. Okay? Very important. Okay? So now, in the last example, we would write off an account at that point in time when we felt that we were no longer going to collect. Here, we have to do an adjusting entry based on some estimates, put the money in a bucket, and then as we're using up the money, we take the money out of the bucket to charge off the accounts. Okay? So let's get started here. It says, on May the 24th, you sold merchandise on account to Old Town Cafe, $18,450. The cost of goods sold was $11,000. Okay, so we have to record the sale. This is happening on May 24th. Okay. So what happened is I'm going to set up my account receivable for Old Town Cafe. Okay. These people owe me money. And... Um, I'm going to record a sale because I sold merchandise to them of $18,450. Okay. I also have to update my cost of goods sold and my inventory. Okay. So my cost of goods sold is going to get debited for $11,000. Right here, the cost of goods sold was $11,000. And I'm going to credit my inventory. Because you no longer have that merchandise in your warehouse anymore. You shipped it out. Okay. That is the first entry that you have. You're always going to have two entries when you record a sale. Okay. Now, on September the 30th, that's May, June, July, August, September, four months later, you received $6,000 from Old Town Cafe and you wrote off the remainder owed to, on the sale of May 24 as uncollectible. So you collected $6,000, but you said, you know what, everything else in that account, I don't think I'm going to collect it, okay? So I'm going to write it off at this point in time, okay? Okay, so on September the 30th, September the 30th, I collected cash of $6,000, okay? Now, this customer had purchased from us Eighteen thousand four fifty. I need to clear the entire accounts receivable balance. Okay, so I have my accounts receivable for Old Town Cafe of eighteen thousand four fifty. I need to clear that. Okay. Now I need to figure out how much do I need to write off. Remember, they're telling you you received the payment and you're going to write off the remainder owed. Okay. So let me get my calculator out. The customer owed me $18,450. They made me a cash payment of $6,000. So they still owe me $12,450, which is what I'm going to write off. Now, because we are using the allowance method, we're going to use the account allowance for doubtful accounts. This is the money that we was put into that bucket. So what we're going to do is we're going to take money out of the bucket. okay? Because we're taking money out of the bucket I'm going to debit the account, okay? So, I'm going to debit my allowance for doubtful account. Let me abbreviate a little bit. Just allowance for doubtful account, okay? That way it fits, okay? And the amount we have said was how much? I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. 18450 minus 6000 That's $12,450. So, I'm going to write off $12,000. 450 
and I'm taking the money out out of my allowance for doubtful account entry right here. Okay. So that is what happened on the 30th of September. Now on December the 7th, you reinstated the account for Old Town Cafe that had been written off on September the 30th and you received a 12450 cash payment in full. So what happened is a couple of uh, months later, the customer decides to pay you the amount that they owed you. Okay. Now, if we look at our books for Old Town Cafe, we're going to see that we wrote off the difference that had not been collected. We wrote off 12450 and we cleared the receivable. So in my books today, Old Town Cafe does not owe me any money. Why? Because I wrote it off. So what are we going to do on December 7th? Well, I'm going to put that receivable back into my books. Okay? And I'm only going to put back into my books the amount that I wrote off. Okay? So I'm going to debit my accounts receivable for Old Town Cafe. The amount that I wrote off on September the 30th was $12,450. Okay? I'm going to go ahead. On September the 30th, I debited my allowance for doubtful accounts. I took money out of the bucket. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the money back in the bucket because I didn't end up using it. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to credit my allowance for doubtful accounts. So when you put money into the bucket, you credit the account. Okay? So I'm putting money back into the bucket. So I'm going to credit my allowance for doubtful accounts. Of twelve thousand four fifty. Now, what happened on December the seventh? Well, on December the seventh, the customer paid you what they owed you. Okay. So, what did you receive from the customer? You received cash. How much cash? Twelve thousand four fifty. Okay. So now this customer doesn't owe you any more money. Um, you reinstated the receivable. So according to my books. Old Town Cafe owes me $12,450. I debited it. Now they're paying me, so now I'm going to credit my accounts receivable for Old Town Cafe. So now my receivable is clear. I had reinstated it for $12,450. Now I'm crediting it. Now this customer doesn't owe me anything and I actually collected the cash. I deposit the money to my bank account. Okay. So that is what happened using the allowance method. Okay. Make sure that we understand that we do an estimate based on some predetermined factors. We debit bad debt expense. We credit allowance for doubtful accounts. We put money into the bucket. As you are writing off the accounts during the months, then you take money out of the bucket. Okay. When you put money into the bucket, you credit the allowance for doubtful accounts. When you take money out of the bucket, you debit the account. Okay. So that is the second problem that we're doing. Exercise 8-4. Now these two concepts, you're going to see them on your test and we'll go over a problem that you're going to be seeing on your upcoming test, on your final exam. Okay. So now we're going to jump over to exercise 8-8. Eight, eight. Now this is a little bit complicated. That's why I decided to go over it. Okay. So it says aging of receivable schedule. Okay. So it says the accounts receivable clerk for Evers Industries prepared the following partially completed aging of receivable schedule as of end of business on July the 31st. So they give you a schedule here. They have three customers and your subtotals. Okay. And the number of days past due on the receivables and the balance. Okay. And then it says here, the following accounts were unintentionally omitted from the aging schedule and not included in the preceding totals. And then they give you the accounts for five different customers. Okay. And their balances and their due dates. Requirement A. Determine the number of days past due for each of the preceding accounts as of July the 31st. B. Complete the aging of receivable schedule by adding the admitted accounts to the bottom of the schedule and updating the total. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to determine the number of days past due for each of the accounts. Okay. 
So we have one, two, three, four, five accounts. I've written them down over here. Um, let me see. There we go. I was like, what am I missing here? I'm missing a column. There we go. So I've got my customer and then I've got my due date. Okay. So my due date here for this one is April the 7th. May the 29th. Let me see if I can. I don't like how these are appearing. Uh, let me change it to text. Okay, let's see. April the 7th. Much better. May 29th. June 8th. Okay. And then Lockwood is August the 10th. And then Van Epps is July the 2nd. Those are my due dates. We need to figure out the number of days past due. So we're gonna look at the due date and compare it to my July the 31st, okay? So we wanna know how many days are past due from the due date to July 31st. So the first one we have is Boyd, April the 7th, okay? Let's see, April the 7th, right here. And right there, April the 7th, okay? So we wanted to know how many days from April the 7th through July 31st. July 31st. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so July. How many days in July? Excuse me again. Ah, I'm sneezing here. Okay, so I have 30 days in April and seven of them have passed by. So I've got 23 days um, in April. Okay, so I'm going to put here 23 days and then in May I have 31 days and then in June I have 30 days. And then in July, I have 31 days, okay? So let's see how many days that gives me. That's 23 days in April, 31 in May, 30 in June, and 31 in July. That gives me 115 days. So this account for Boyd is 115 days past due, okay? Now we're going to look at Hodges. Hodges starts in May 29th, okay? May 29th, right here, okay? So, how many days do we have pending in May? We have 30 and 31. We don't count that day, okay? We count the day after. So, it's 30 and 31, so we have two days in May. We have 30 days in June, the whole month in June, 30. And we have 31 days in July. Okay. So let's see what that gives us. That's two days plus 30 plus 31. That gives me 63 days past due. Okay. Now let's look at Kent Creek, June the 8th. So for this, you need a, a calendar, guys. Unless you are wonderful and you have all of your days memorized, I don't, okay? So I needed, I, that's why I pulled the calendar. That way you could follow along, okay? So June the 8th, okay? So I'm gonna get my calculator out. So I'm gonna do 30 days. There's 30 days in June, and I'm gonna subtract the eight days that when we started, June the 8th. So that means it's 22 days in June, okay? So we have 22 days in June and we have 31 days in July. And that gives me 22 plus 31, that gives me 53 days. Now let's look at Lockwood. Lockwood says that it's due on August the 10th. We're doing the aging as of July. So this customer is not past due because their payment is due on August. So this one is not past due. Okay. And then we look at Van Epps, July the 2nd. Okay. 
So all we're doing is we're counting from the day it's due to the end of the month. Okay. So here we have 31 days minus 2. I'm sorry. 31 minus 2. That gives me 29 days. Okay. 31 minus 2 gives me 29 days. So I've already figured out how many days I'm past due, okay? For each of my customers, very important. Why? Because then I'm gonna be using this number of days past due to fill out my aging report, okay? And on my aging report, I have a certain number of criteria here, okay? So, what I did is, I went ahead and I copied the information from here. All I did is copy and paste. I haven't done anything at this point in time. All I did was copy my information from the top to the bottom, okay? Why? Because for requirement B, they're asking us to complete the aging of receivable schedule, okay? So I need to complete the schedule with these customers that we accidentally forgot to include, okay? So this is my starting point that is given in the problem. Now I'm gonna continue by adding the customers that I forgot, okay? The first customer I forgot was Boyd Industries, okay? Now, the balance for Boyd right here, it's $36,000, okay? $36,000. Now, where am I gonna put these $36,000 into? What category? Well, if we look right here, um, Boyd was 115 days past due. So because there are 150 days, I'm going to put them into the last category. Any customer or balance that is over 90 days past due goes here. That's $36,000. Okay? So you're basically just putting it into the bucket that it belongs. Okay? The second customer we have is Hodges Company. Uh, Hodges had a balance of uh, 11500 Now, Hodges was 63 days past due, okay? 63 days, so that means it's going to go over here in this category, 61 through 90. So it's going to be 11500 The next one we have is Kent Creek. Kent Creek had a balance of $6,600. Well, how many days past due was Kent Creek? 53 days. So Kent Creek, 53 days. So that's going to be in the 31 to 60 category. Okay? That'll be $6,600 right there. Next we have Lockwood Company. Okay? Lockwood Company. Lockwood had a balance of $7,400. Okay. How many days past due was Lockwood? Lockwood was not past due. Okay. So because they're not past due, I'm going to put them in that first column right there, $7,400. Okay. And last but not least, we had Van Epps Company. Okay. Oh, sorry. Van Epps. And the balance for Vanna Epps was $13,000. Okay. And Van Epps was past due 29 days. Okay. So 29 days falls under the 1 through 29 mark. So that's going to be, um, how much? $13,000. Okay. So now we can get our totals. So I'm going to get my total, and that's going to include my subtotal. This is going to be my total from the subtotal down, okay? So I'm going to add the sum of everything from my subtotal all the way down to include the five accounts that I forgot to include, okay? So it's your subtotal. These amounts up here are included in your subtotal. So my starting point is the subtotal plus the customers we forgot to include, okay? So you're gonna run a total of them, 
because I'm using Excel, it's just easy, I just run it across. So basically, it's the total of your subtotal plus everything after that. Okay. So these are the numbers that you get. A million one twenty four five hundred is your total total receivable. That is how much people owe you. That you've uh, they purchased on account from you. Not past due is six hundred seven thousand four hundred dollars. From one to through thirty days past due, two hundred thirty three thousand. From thirty one to sixty days past due. 121,600. From 61 to 90 days past due, 96,500. And over 90 days, 66,000. Now, what happens with the receivables is the longer you keep them in the books, the higher the probability that you're not going to collect them. Okay? So, if people are buying on account from you, you have to be a little bit aggressive and make sure that you collect that money as soon as possible. The longer you wait, the longer the, pro the higher the probabilities that you are not going to collect it. Okay. So that is the aging of accounts receivable. It basically breaks down your accounts receivable by category. And it's called an aging because it ages your receivables by a predetermined number of days past due. Okay. So then you can make a decision. Do I need to write off these balances, these $66,000? It's been sitting in my books for over 90 days and I have not collected. Management needs to make a decision of what to do with those receivables. Okay? So this, this is the completed problem. First, figure out the number of days past due. If you can, just from the top of your head, make sure you work off of a calendar. And then the second thing is complete the aging report. From your subtotal down is the accounts that you forgot to include. Then you run a new total, which is the amount that is pending to be collected. Let me use another color. I don't like that color. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. okay. So this is the total amount that needs to be collected from your customers, broken down by past due um, uh, dates. Okay. Now, you're going to use this information, okay? To complete the next part of the problem okay problem 8 9 or exercise 8 9 i'm sorry it says estimating allowance for doubtful accounts evers industry has a past history of uncollectible accounts as follows estimate the allowance of doubtful accounts based on the aging of receivable schedule you completed in 8 8 okay so this is what it's going to look like okay so they're asking you to use the information that you had in the pro prior problem this to complete this problem, okay? They're telling you that for any account that is not past due, there's a 1% chance that you're not gonna collect it. From one to 30 days past due, there's 3% chance that you're not gonna collect it. Or 3% of the receivables is not going to be collected. From 31 to 60 days, 12% of your receivables is not going to be collected. 61 to 90 days, 30% of your receivables is not going to be collected. And anything over 90 days past due, 75% of your receivable is not going to be collected. So you see that as time progresses, the older your item sits on your books, the higher the percentage of the probability that you are not going to collect. Okay. So what are we going to do? Well, I'm going to copy and paste my amount your, your total you always want to pick up your total receivable okay i'm going to copy and i'm going to paste it over here that is going to be my starting point okay so i've got my totals here this is your total receivable okay so all i did here guys was copy and paste from your prior problem. I copied my total. That's going to be my starting point over here. Okay. I copied and I pasted. Okay. Now I'm going to do my percentage on collectible. On collect, on collectible. Here we go. My percentage on collectible. Well, according to the problem, if the amount, the account is not past due, there's a 1% chance I'm not going to cut, or 1% of the receivable is not going to be collected. Let me make that into percentages. Here we go. So 1% of 607,400 is not going to be collected. 3% of 
of any account between 1 to 30 days past due is not going to be collected. 12% of your total balances that are between 31 and 60 days past due are not going to be collected. 30% of your receivables between 61 to 90 days past due is not going to be collected. And 75%, that's so significant here, 75% of the receivables over 90 days is not going to be collected. So you get your total receivables, you enter the percent uncollectible that was determined by your organization to calculate the allowance for doubtful account. So what are we going to do is we are going to multiply the total receivable times the percent uncollectible, okay? So it's going to be your total receivable times, sorry, times the percentage, okay? That's going to give me 6,074. So that means that out of the 607,400 that is not past due, I am not going to collect $6,074. So we run our numbers for all of our different uh, categories. Okay? All you do is you multiply the receivable times the percent and collectible. Okay? And that is what we get okay? per section. So let's look over here at the over 90 days past due. Okay? You have $66,000 of receivables sitting in your books. According to our estimates, you're not going to collect 49500 out of that 66, which is 75% of your total receivable. You are not going to collect. Okay? Now we're going to get a total. Okay? Because that total is what we're going to use to do our entry of how much we estimate, estimate that we are not going to collect. Okay? So according to our calculations, um, the receivables that we have sitting in our books based on the different tiers that we have, we have a million one twenty four five hundred in receivables and we estimate we are not going to collect a hundred and six thousand one oh six. This is the amount being estimated that will not be collected. Okay. So that is how we complete our um schedule here that they're wanting us to do okay so they're asking us to do the aging of receivable schedule which is what we have here um very simple just multiply the receivable amount times the percent of collectible percentage and that'll give you your allowance for doubtful account that is the amount that here that we're going to basically put into that bucket at the end of the year for the next year that way we can have all year to be able to write off all of these accounts as we see fit okay so that's another problem here. This is a continuation of exercise 8A. This is where we finally complete it. Okay? Now, this is the last problem I'm going to go over with you. This problem is going to be on your test. Okay? Exercise 813. Okay? This is going to be on your test. And it, I'm going to run through this quickly because we've already covered the topic. Okay? They're asking us to do the entries both using the bad debt expense and the direct write-off, the direct write-off method and the allowance method. Okay, the two methods that we covered in exercise eight three and eight four. So this should be uh, very similar to what we've already done. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through it quickly because okay? I've already taken too long here. So it says the following selected transactions were taken from the records of Shipway Company for the first year of its operations ending December the thirty first. Okay, April the thirteenth. Okay. And then they give you one, two, three, four, four, five transactions, okay? We have to record those transactions in a journal, okay? Now, it says journalize the transactions under the direct write-off method. So the first set of entries for requirement A are going to be the direct write-off method, okay? Okay. So let's start. April 13th. So, you wrote off an account for Don Shepard, 8450. We are using the direct write-off method. 
when we use this method, we debit bad debt expense and we credit the accounts receivable. Okay, we're clearing the receivable. Okay. And we are writing off 8450. Okay. So we debit bad debt expense, we credit the receivable. On May 15th, you received $500 as a partial payment on the $7,100 account of Don Pyle. You wrote off the remaining balance as uncollectible. Okay. May 15th, okay. you received $500 in cash. So cash is going to get debited for $500. Okay. It says here that uh, that's a partial payment on the $7,100 account of Don Pyle. So Dan Pyle owed me $7,100. So that's going to be my account receivable for Dan Pyle, $7,100. So they're telling you to write off the difference between what you received and what they owed you. So the customer owed me $7,100. They paid me $500. So that means I'm going to write off $6,600. I'm not going to collect that. Because I am using the direct write-off method, I'm going to debit bad, sorry about that, bad debt expense of $6,600. Okay. That happened on the 15th. On July the 27th, you received $8,450 from Don Shepard, whose account had been written off on April the 13th. So let's look at April 13th. We wrote off the account. Now the customer... April, May, June, July, three months later, comes back and pays us the full amount that they owed us. Okay? So, reinstate the account and record the cash receipt. So, on April the 13th, I had written it off. Now I need to put it back into my books, so I'm going to reverse this entry that I had here. So, I debited bad debt expense, now I'm going to credit bad debt expense. Okay? I'm going to credit it 8450. I credited accounts receivable for Shepard. Now I'm going to debit accounts receivable for Shepard. So you're doing the opposite of what you did on April the 13th. Okay. So what does this do? This reverses that entry that you did on the 13th. Now what happened on the 27th? You received a cash payment. So what did you receive from Shepard? You received cash. Okay. So we received cash of $84.50. Now, in my books, I show that Shepard owes me, sorry about that, Shepard owes me $84.50. Well, he just paid me $84.50, so I need to clear the receivable. So the receivable needs to get credited for the $84.50. So what happened here is on the first thing you do is you reverse the entry where you wrote it off. So let me do, you're reversing, I, sorry about that, let me see, where do we go, right here, okay, so what we're doing here is we are reversing this entry right here, okay, this entry of 84.50, we are reversing it down here, okay. So whatever you did on the original entry that you wrote off, you're going to do the opposite, and then you have to record the actual cash received and clear the receivable once again. And this is all happening on July the 27th. Okay. Now, what else are we doing? Let me make this a little bit smaller. Then that happened on July the 27th. On December the 31st, you're going to write off the following accounts as uncollectible. Record as one journal entry. Okay? So you, this is happening on December the 31st. Okay? And it says here we're going to write off all of these accounts. The account that we use to write off using the direct write-off method. Okay? 
um, is uh, bad debt expense. Okay. Now, I don't know my total yet, but I'm going to put my account because bad debt expense is going to be debited. All of the accounts that I'm writing off are going to be credited. So I'm going to credit my accounts receivable for Paul Chapman. And I'm clearing 2225 from that account. And then I'm going to have another account receivable for Dwayne De Rosa. And I'm clearing 3550 from that account. Okay. So anytime you're clearing a receivable, you are going to credit it. Okay. Teresa Galloway for clearing 4770. So whenever we credit an account receivable, it means that this customer no longer owes me the money. So there's two credits posted to a receivable. Either one of it, you write it off, which is what we're doing right here, or the second one is when the customer actually pays you cash, you credit the accounts receivable to clear off the receivable. Okay. So next one we have is Ernie Flats, and that one owes me twelve seventy five. That's what I'm writing off. And then I have, last but not least, Marty Ritchie. And I'm going to write off 16 night. Okay. So when you write off your account, you credit the receivable and you debit bad debt expense. They're wanting you to do one entry. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my total of what am I going to write off. I'm going to write off 225. 3550 4770 that's 1275 and 1690 I'm writing off $13,510 remember when you're doing your entries the debits need to equal the credits so just for purposes of me making sure that I'm in balance I'm gonna just add all of my debits up and I'm gonna add all of my credits up yep I'm in balance These are my totals. Okay. I just like to be on the safe side, make sure that my debits equal my credits before I move on to anything else. That way I you know it doesn't affect my calculations at the end. Okay. So the direct write-off method, whenever you need to write off an account that you deem you're not gonna collect, you use the account fat debt expense. Okay. Now requirement B. We're going to generalize the transactions under the allowance method. Shipway Company uses the percent of credit sales method of estimating uncollectible accounts expense. Based on past history, an industry average of three-fourths percentage of credit sales are expected to be uncollectible. Shipway recorded 3,778,000 of credit sales during the year. So first of all, they're asking you to journalize the transactions using the allowance method, okay? Let me copy this. Now this is requirement B, and we are doing the allowance method. Okay, so we're going to do the same entries that we did up here, but now using the allowance method. So the first thing we have here is we wrote off the account for Don Shepard, 8450, okay? So, because we are using the allowance method, okay, this is where we take money out of that bucket. So what am I going to do? This is happening on April the 13th. So, I have, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to debit my allowance for doubtful account. Okay. And I'm going to credit the receivable. Okay. For Don Shepard. Okay. So, the allowance for doubtful accounts, that's the account that we put money into. That's our bucket. So, now I'm taking money out of my bucket. Okay. So, let's go back to where I was talking about the buckets. Okay. Over here. Okay. So, if I take money out of the bucket, I debit the account. If you put money into the bucket, you credit the account. If you take money out of the bucket when you are ready to write off an account. Okay? So here we're writing off $84.50. Okay? 
So let's look at the difference. Under the allowance method, I use the account allowance for doubtful accounts. Under the direct write-off method, I use the account bad debt expense. That's the difference, the account that we're using. Okay. Now what else happened? On the 15th, you received a $500 cash payment of the $7,100 receivable owed. You wrote off the remaining balance. Okay. So this is happening as of May the 15th. So what did we do? We received cash of $500. Okay. I need to clear out the receivable because um, it says there that the customer paid us and whatever balance they had left, we're gonna clear it. So the customer had a, um, had a balance of $7,100. So I'm gonna clear the balance of $7,100. Now, how much am I gonna write off? Well, the customer owed me $7,100. They only paid me $500. So that means I'm going to write off $6,600. Okay. What account am I going to use to write off the $6,600? The allowance for doubtful accounts. Okay. Now let's look at July. You received $8,450 from Dean Shepard, whose account had been written off on April the 13th. Reinstate the account and record the cash receipt. So, this account that we wrote off here on April the 13th, we need to put it back into our books because now the customer came back a couple of months later and they're paying us. So we have to do the opposite of what we did there, okay? This is happening on July the 27th, okay? So what happened here? My allowance got debited, so that means my allowance is going to get credited. Do the opposite, okay? Eighty-four fifty. Now my accounts receivable got credited, so that means I have to debit my accounts receivable. What this does is it this puts your receivable back into the book, and it shows that this customer um, owes you money. Okay. Now what also happened on the twenty-seventh? Well, the customer made a payment, a full payment of what they owed you. So what did the customer do? The customer paid you cash, okay? Um, how much cash did you receive? You received cash of $84.50, okay? Now, what are we gonna do here? I had set up a receivable. This receivable tells me that Don Shepard owes me $84.50. Now, this customer is owing me their balance or paying me off their balance, so I need to clear this receivable so I debited my accounts receivable here to reinstate it. Now I need to credit my receivable to clear it due to the payment. So Don Shepard accounts receivable gets credited the eighty-four fifty. Let me add a little bit more columns here. Okay, very quick. Now what else happened? We wrote off all of these accounts. Paul Schaffman, Duane De La Rosa, Teresa Galloway, Ernie Klatt, Marty Ritchie. We need to write all of these out using one entry, okay? So, what's gonna happen? The account that we're gonna debit to write all of these off, this is happening on December the 31st. And usually the end of the year is when most of the write-offs are done. We want to clear our books for the following year, and we want to use up the money that we have in that bucket, that allowance bucket. So usually the busiest or the most, the month that has the most write-offs is the last month of the year. Okay. So when we're writing off accounts, we use allowance for doubtful accounts. Now I don't know how much that's going to be yet because I need to write off all of my receivables first. So I have accounts receivable for Paul Chapman, and that amount is $2,225. I'm going to clear my receivable. You know what? I'm not going to copy all that. I have them right here. I'm just going to copy and paste in the, the amounts. They're the same amounts that we used up here, okay? Just to save some time. Here we go. So. I'm going to write off the balance for Chapman, for De Rosa, for Galloway, for Clad, and for Richie. These total to $13,510. That is the amount that I'm writing off here. Okay. The only difference between what happened up here is that here, 
Under the direct write-off, I use bad debt expense. Under the allowance method, I use allowance for doubtful accounts. Okay? So you can compare and contrast. The entries are the same, guys. The only thing that changes is when you use the direct write-off method, you use bad debt expense. When you use the allowance method, you use allowance for doubtful accounts. The accounts receivable does not change. The cash does not change. The only thing that changes is when you're writing off an account, which account are you using? Are you using the allowance or are you using the bad debt expense? Okay. So the, the decision is going to be based off which method am I using. If I'm using the direct write-off method, I use bad debt expense. If I'm using the allowance method, I use the allowance for that full account. Plain and simple. Now we're not done yet. Okay. It says here, if necessary, record the year-end adjusting entry. Now, for the direct write-off method, there is no end-of-year adjusting entries done because we write off the accounts as we see fit. Whenever I feel like writing off an account, I debit back that expense. So under the direct write-off method, there will be no entry. No entry done. Now, under the... Uh, I lost my train. Okay, under the allowance method, you do have to have an adjusting entry on the 31st, okay? What's going to happen is you're going to put money into that bucket, that allowance bucket. You need to figure out how much money, okay? Now, the problem says that uh, based on past history and industry averages, three-fourths percentage of credit sales are expected to be uncollectible. And we have sales of three million seven seventy eight. Okay, so the entry that needs to happen every end of year is for our estimates. Okay, is we're gonna debit bad debt expense, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put money into that bucket. Whenever we put money into the bucket, we credit the allowance for doubtful accounts. Now, the question here is how much, okay? This is where we are putting money into the bucket. We only do this once a year, okay? We estimate how much do we think we are going to write off during the year. We expense it out the last day of the month, and we put it into the bucket. That way, as the year progresses, the money is already there. We just take it out, okay? So, the um, problem said that we had $3 million I, what did I do? Okay, right here. So the problem says we have three million seven seventy eight million of sales, and it said, let me see, three fourth percentage. Okay, so I need to put that into a three divided by four. That's zero point seventy five percent. Okay. So 0.75% is not going to be collected, okay? And let's see what we get. Let me get my calculator. So we've got 3,778,123,000. Okay, so we've got 3,778,123,000. So that means that $28,335 is not going to be collected. That is what we anticipate, $28,335. So I'm going to debit my bad debt expense, $28,335, and I'm going to credit my allowance for double accounts of $28,335. So what we're doing here is we're taking, we're expensing, we're taking this as a loss at the end of the year, December the 31st, and I'm putting the money into a bucket, okay? That way, next year, you know, um, as the year progresses, I've got money into that bucket, and I can just take money out and figure out, you know what? Um, I'm writing off all of these accounts from last year, and I had already had put money aside because I had determined that about 28335 of it was not going to be collectible, okay? So that is what we're doing here. That is how we calculate it, okay? 
so that this adjusting entry is only needed under the allowance method only under the allowance method so now let's do requirement C and I'm going to do requirement C right here Okay. For requirement C, how much higher or lower would ship weight companies' net income have been under the direct write-off method than under the allowance method? So now we're, we're comparing the impact of these entries in our financial statements. So how much higher or lower would the net income have been under the direct write-off method than under the allowance method? So under the allowance method, let me make these a little bit bigger because it's too small for us to read. Let's do 18, okay? Under the allowance method, we are estimating okay, that we are not going to collect, what amount? We're not gonna collect 28,335, okay? So we don't wait to see what accounts we're gonna write off. We make this determination based on this calculation, based on estimates, based on industry, based on several factors, okay? So I am taking an expense of 28,335. Whether I use it or not, this is what I'm putting in my books. An expense of 28,335. Expense accounts are recorded on your income statement. Remember your income statement is your revenue minus your expenses. So I am accounting for 28,335 of expenses, okay? Now, under the direct write-off method, add all of the amounts that I actually did write off, okay? So, the amounts that I actually wrote off are the ones that are going to impact my um, financial statements, okay? So, any account or any entry done to bad debt expense, we're going to add those together, okay? And I'm going to get bad debt expense right here, right here. Now I have a credit because we made a reversal and I have one right there, okay? So those are my entries at using the direct write-off method, okay? So, I'm gonna get my calculator out. That's 84.50 plus 6,600. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and then I'm gonna subtract because this is a reversal, 84.50. And then I'm gonna add 13,510. So the amount that I actually wrote off is 20,000 one hundred and ten dollars okay that is the amount that i wrote off okay you add add subtract and add okay 8450 plus 6600 minus 8450 plus 13510 okay only the entries that affected bad debt expense okay 20110 okay so now the difference is going to be how that would have impacted your financial statement, okay? So, it's gonna be your allowance method minus your direct write-off method. We have a difference of 8,225, okay? Now, what does that mean, okay? That means that ship waste companies income would be 8,225 higher under the direct write-off method than under the allowance method. Okay, let me make this a little bit, there we go. So what does this mean? This means that if you use the allowance method, you would have recorded an expense of 28,335. If you use the direct write-off method, you would have expense 20,110. Which expense is greater? The expense that is greater is my allowance method, okay? So that means that if you were to have used the direct write-off method, you would have reported income of 8,225 higher than under the direct, uh, than under the allowance method. So the income is greater 
for this particular example, okay, income is greater if you used the direct write-off method. because your expense, your bad debt expense is lower. Bad debt expense is lower, okay? Let me make this into the next sentence. Cut. So, what happens here is we have to compare the two. Remember, the allowance method is the one where we estimate. I estimate I am going to write off 28,335. It's an estimate, but at that point when you make that estimate, you have to record the expense in your books to bad debt expense, okay? So I put 28,335 aside for those unexpected items, okay? So your expense to bad debt expense is 28,335. Under the direct write-off method, you only expense as you go. So whenever you write off an account, that's when you hit the bad debt expense account. So comparing the two methods, in this particular example that we did, there's a difference of 8,225. Income would be uh, reported uh, lower if you would use the allowance method. Income would be reported higher if you use the direct write-off method. So you're gonna have something similar to this in your test. Please look over it carefully, analyze all of the transactions. You know, you can go back and forth on my um, video, pause it as you're looking at the entry so you can analyze, do whatever you need to do. I've tried explaining it as thoroughly as possible, that way you can understand. Uh, please make sure that you read um, the chapter. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out to me. Um, we can schedule a Zoom session. We can schedule a conference call. Whatever it takes so you can get the content. Okay? But please, um, if you have a question, make sure that you've read because I'm going to quiz you on it. When you call me, I'm going to say, okay, did you read this page? Did you look at this example? Um, because I don't want you calling me and saying, I am lost. I don't understand when you haven't even tried reading the chapter. Okay? I am here to help you, but I am here to also teach you how to do critical thinking on your own, okay? If you have questions, send me a Blackboard message, send me an email, whatever works for you. Um, I hope all of you stay safe. Um, I look forward uh, to next the next lecture that I prepared for you guys. Um, stay safe um, and reach out to me if you have anything. I miss you all very much. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.